Hello everyone and welcome back to Raise Aerospace in Kerbal Space Program 2 where I continue my construction of the International Space Station in low carbon orbit with STS-98 which is delivering the Destiny module to the station. Unfortunately we don't have a science lab part available so I'm making do with a couple of hitchhiker containers. We have Jebediah, John Bass, Mick Gass and Gregory. We are lined up with the station properly and so we will launch. Ignition and launch. Okay, some form of roll complete. Okay, and oh, oh, booster set. Ooh, we're rolling a bit. A little ah, we bumped the wings. Okay, correcting northward. Unfortunately, I've spent much of the launch in this view in order to correct our inclination properly. Still haven't gotten the launch timing quite right. Especially since uh, everything moves quite a lot while I'm just talking, so... Okay... And, okay, that was more than I wanted. I think this time I will attempt to dock the shuttle to the station even though that's a horrible idea. And the reason for that is, we're probably going to have to pull off PMA2 anyway in order to dock the Destiny module in that same location. Engines off, separation. And RCS up. Okay, we are now in our phasing orbit. We've got a 0.2 degree inclination difference. We've got one intercept point on that side. And we are now time warping to catch up to the station. Okay, looks like on this orbit we'll have to lift our orbit up. Oh, it's getting a bit choppy here. Okay, there's our encounter within a kilometer there. Proceeding. Definitely feels a little bit laggier right now though. Will our station eventually get too big? Will I even be able to dock with uh, whatever lag we have there right now? Okay, there it is. Oh, I'd really like daylight. I can figure out where we are here. Very dangerous to do all this really close to the station. Well, overall things are looking okay. Everything's glistening a lot. I don't think that's all thruster firing. They should all be off and there's no SAS on the station. Okay, well now we've got a better view. Coming in here. We're, we're off though. Well, I think there's some magnetism. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Oh, and everything exploded. Okay. Um, yeah. So, we're, um, we're not gonna dock it to the station. <laughs> nope. Not gonna dock it to the station. Yeah, well that was pretty definitive. The game really doesn't mess around when it wants to destroy stuff, huh? It was a nice docking, by the way. Alright, well, it looks like we have to start all the way back with the launch because some of the autosaves the wing is already separated. The other autosaves don't want to start. They get stuck on creating vessel, which is worrisome. So here we are. We are going to launch STS-98 again. And we are lined up. So ignition. Skip countdown. And launch. Okay. Uh... We didn't quite get the same last crew member as we did last time. We've got Kindler Kerman this time. I restarted the game just in case. Seemed prudent. 
All right, roll program more or less complete. And let me tell you, it still rolls around a lot. It's not like steady or anything. Now, if I didn't have to do the roll program rolling into the correct heading for the station, it'd probably be a lot steadier. But it's hard to do that roll early on and still keep it steady. Okay, booster set. Uh, I think they cleared the wings without hitting them this time. But we're rolling. Ah! I mean, around here, after we stabilize it a bit, after booster separation, it's okay, but... I would love to be able to use my joystick. The problem is the keys are either 0 or 1. They're, you know, discrete as far as the input is concerned. And it's not very good for controlling things. I know uh, people who aren't used to using a joystick might not understand because it takes some time to get used to using a joystick. Uh, people tend to sort of overdo things when they first use a joystick, but it's a lot easier to control things with very fine-tuned adjustments than it is with keyboard. Oh, we're pretty close to in line this time. I don't think I need to do a correction. Uh, we, we can even go maybe a little bit south. I thought we were going to need to go north. Timing was good this time. That's so good, I might even enjoy this view for a bit. So this time we are definitely not getting the shuttle anywhere near the station. Fortunately, I put a lot of RCS fuel on the Destiny module. So, hope with, with any luck it's going to be able to get itself to the station from a decent distance away. Point two degrees. Okay, and we'll take that as a external tank disposal orbit. So, there's our Destiny module. Just two hitchhiker cans, a whole bunch of RCS and the controllers up front. And the RCS ports here that are active because I don't know how to disable them while they're in the bay. And uh, it's a senior docking port on both sides. This time after restarting everything, I didn't have as much lag during launch. And so hopefully that is a positive sign. People talk about how hard it is to do anything in here with the bugs, but I'll tell you, it's still easier than doing it in Realism Overhaul with Real Solar System. <laughs> it's, and I built the ISS in Real Solar System. That took three years. Uh, I'm not going to take that long here. Um, if it can be done at all. So, no. Um, and using Canada Arm and all that business. But the margins on doing the missions with Realism Overhaul with the shuttle are so tight. It has so little extra fuel to work with that it is very painful to try and manage it. And landing the shuttle, the surface area of Earth is a hundred times that of Kerbin. And you're coming in three times as fast. Okay, well, that's, that's closer than I wanted, so... First of all, let's see if suddenly we get a lag bomb at some point, which would indicate that physics is... Ah, uh, here, we got lag right there. I, I don't know what the distance between us and the target was, but we got extra lag right there. So it loaded some stuff at the target. Right there. It might be safer if we don't even get that far. But I don't know what the distance is. Giving the payload as much mob propellant as possible. Okay, we are within four kilometers of the station right now. Uh, just kill all relative velocity and then get the payload out and the payload is gonna have to cover that four kilometers on its own. Maybe we should just bring the shuttle back. <laughs> um, the payload will be fine, right? It's not going anywhere. I don't know, it's already used 0.1 tons though. If it drifts away from the station too much it's gonna be painful. 
All right, yeah, we'll bring this to the station. Let me save here. We're gonna have to pull off PMA2 first before docking this. Well, just out of morbid curiosity, I'm gonna switch back to the shuttle. Okay, I'm gonna turn RCS off and try to turn to see if the wings are still attached. It seems that way. I'm going to save it again. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to have it retroburn to a lower orbit right now, actually. Uh, as long as that's, that, that's not towards the station. Okay, right there will be one end of our standard orbit. Let's quickly change back to these guys. They all, they all jumped a little bit when I moved to them, though. It's never a good sign in my apartment. It's sort of sad that they didn't put the science lab part in. Even if we don't have the science system, we could have used the part without the system active. For this situation in particular, obviously. There's certainly lag around the station. If there ends up being too much lag, there is an alternate way to assemble this without each module having its own RCS controller and all that business. And that is to have tugs. Uh, the, that's more time-consuming because the tugs didn't have to dock with everything and undock with everything constantly. Uh, then everything just has to have an extra docking port or two. And usually you need two tugs to keep things stable. And then we can just use the tugs for everything. But I wanted to see uh, how big a thing and how complicated a thing with how many parts we could assemble in the game right now. And so this has been a good test of that, and we'll see how performance is as this gets larger and larger. It used to be when you right-click on a part, and then you right-click again away, it would close that menu. Now, if you right-click on a part, it takes a while, pops up. It never used to take a while to pop up with the right-click menu. And then if you right-click outside, that doesn't close it again. So still inferior to the old context menu as far as I'm concerned, that part manager. Okay, that seems like a good enough match for now. To the station. And removing PMA2. SAS on, RCS. It's already got enough of an impulse away, I think. In fact, I'm going to turn on RCS and oh, uh, control from here. Okay. Stop it from moving away anymore. Oh, no, no, don't move towards it. Don't move towards it. Oh, shoot. Where are you pointing? Where is it pointing? Um, well, SAS is not working. Its orientation isn't working. It was such a good part. It came all this way on its own. It's got a re little reaction wheel in the pod. Um, I don't want to do this to you, but I've got time warp. Oh, it, it started... Look, just with time warp, it started doing... Okay, that's not good. Is there any way to not lose PMA3? Uh, 2, sorry, PMA2. Okay, well, this autosave has us approaching the station again. The shuttle is 16 kilometers away right now. It, it does look like there's no way to save PMA2, though. We could bring another one up on the next shuttle mission, which only delivers the quest module. It's a peculiar thing, though, that when something undocks, it just goes up completely out of control. Okay. We're focused on this. Set as target. If I put SAS now, are you going to be okay? No, it's not. It's turning. 
Uh, I think it's done for. It's turning and it's not reading that on the nav ball. Okay, coming in. Yeah, it's still tumbling there. That's dangerous to have something like that there. Not that it's tumbling, that it's glitchy. Don't want glitchy things close to the station. It's possible that restarting the game will help that. One good thing about each module here having its own control though is that it makes it easier for us to do nefarious things with the ISS later on. Okay, we've docked. Alright. Gives a little report whenever we dock. Uh, the other thing... Yeah, it's still not showing that it's rotating on the nav ball here. I'm gonna save. And maybe its issues will cause problems for the station. Maybe not. Okay, well, now when it's rotating, it shows it on the nav ball. Okay, let's see, do we have target? We do not have target. Okay, well, let's try and target the station. This is dangerous, though. 41.5 meters per second, but not changing. That's critical. Okay. I don't know if we have enough delta V in this. It'd be helpful if it wasn't trying to keep balance all over the place. Maybe I should spin stabilize it or something. Well, it's better than the way it was going. It was firing the thrusters all over the place. Oh, oh, it jumped. Oh, the station jumped a lot just there. Like 200 meters. Gosh. Um, but it's still intact. <laughs> Delta V3000, what utter nonsense. Now I'll have to be patient as it closes because time warping seems dangerous. Can we make it with 0.01 tons of mod propellant? It's a little bit askew, but I'm not gonna fix that right now. Just gonna have to rely on docking, docking port magnetism and the fact that I don't actually intend to use this port for a while. Oh wow! It Okay, yeah. Uh, maybe I should go and turn that down in the settings. But for now, we saved it. We saved PMA2. Hopefully it hasn't damaged the station at all. I'm going to save again, and we have to bring back down the shuttle. I don't think I'm going to get two missions in in this episode because it's taken a while to do everything. Uh, so sorry about that. I intended to do two missions in each episode. But we'll have to save the next one, which is launching the quest airlock. And then uh, whatever comes after that uh, for the next video. In fact, after that, uh, we've got Piers. But Piers isn't currently part of the ISS. So we might skip it. We don't really have a good, very good rendition of the Soyuz anyway. Because we don't have the 1.875 meter parts. I'll think about that. I, I, I don't want to dock Piers to it and then undock Piers to it. So uh, we might just skip Piers. And so we'll just go straight to the S0 truss, which will be interesting. Okay, what state is our shuttle in? Time warping? Well, the wing isn't drifting away during time warp, that's a start. We'll get to our periapsis, bring down the apoapsis. And then try and figure out when to land. Okay, it all looks attached together. We're in business. We're still a little bit heavy, so I'm gonna waste some fuel here. Okay, I think we'll try and descend on this next orbit. And we overshot again last time. So I'll start it... I'll just start it on the opposite side of the KSC this time. Okay, we are gonna take that. It feels like it's gonna be early though. Oh, the Space Center is way south now, too. Wow, we're north. <laughs> this is obviously not the orbit to come down on. I'm gonna have to refine that whole idea, too. 
Kerbin just rotates really quickly. Even though our orbit is really quick, it rotates very quickly too. Well, I'll try and start rolling now at the risk of doing something horrible to my Kerbals. Does this have cross range? I have no idea. Our impact point is really close. I don't like that. I think I started this too soon. I made too much of a difference compared to previously. We gotta ignite the engines for a bit. Just struggling to keep that impact point on the shore. Well, we're gonna be out of the monopropellant soon. This first time we're going to be coming down through this part of re-entry without anything in the tail though, so... Who knows that'll how that'll affect things. We can see land. Always a positive. That's better than it was before. Okay, I'm gonna straighten up before the mob propellant runs out. That's it. At least we have reaction wheels here. If this was realism overhaul, the shuttle would go completely out of control when it ran out of mod propellant. Or, not really mod propellant, RCS propellant. Well, we'll get as close as possible, but we're not that close. Maybe with some glide we'll be closer than last time, but not where I wanted to go. I really don't want to hit those hills though. Uh, they stretch right across. If I can get over here, that'd be nice, but I don't know. Yeah, we're, we're aiming just for those hills. Um, Alright, we're gonna try and turn. We are currently over here, still a ways away from the space center. Yeah, trying to start the retro early. It was too early. Uh, there's a bit of a hill there. Uh, it's bumpier than I thought it was going to be. Gear down. Oh, way bumpier. Ooh. It's not going to be good. Rocks, too. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, there's a ravine. Oh! Oh, ow! Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, this is not going to turn out as good as before. <laughs> Sorry. Ah, uh, ah, uh, oh, oh. Yeah, we really need to get it back to the space center. But our Kerbal survived. That's the important thing. <laughs> oh, gosh, such hills. I really need to make sure next time we should just land near the beach and not even come anywhere close to these. I called them hills before. Those are mountains, darn it. Uh, these are the hills over here. Yeah, we got wrecked by the hills. Okay, but the Kerbal survived. Let's uh, recover vessel. Indeed, our station appears to be in good shape. So, that is the state of the International Space Station around Kerbin as after STS-98. And I'll wrap it up here and say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.